Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software. Now I'm going to be looking at the PC version of Affinity Photo but it should work just as well in the Mac version. Um, recently I've been looking at some Photoshop tutorials that have been mentioning something called the Luminosity Mask. So I wanted to see whether it was possible to do something similar in Affinity Photo. Now I did a bit of reading and from what I can m m work out the luminosity mask will mask either the light, light areas or the dark areas or sort of somewhere in between the, like the grey areas depending on how you've set the luminosity mask up. which. You know, a lot of the Photoshop tutorials it says it's very good for help blending different layers and different images and what have you. So I had a quick read up of the help file, which is not very helpful, I'm afraid. Um, but all it says about the luminosity mask is if you hold down Control and Shift and then click on the icon in the layers panel, and as you can see, it has sort of selected all sorts of areas of this image here. Now this is where I sort of come to a loss because I can't see a way to define which areas are being selected. It just selects whichever areas it wants to as far as I can tell. And also from what I've read and what have you see you can click on add a mask and then it will add a mask of those areas that are selected which is you know it's all well and good but like I said I don't have any control over what's being selected or exactly what happens after this so let me just control and Z a couple of times to get rid of all that and get back to where I was so this is where I went sort of to try and investigate a bit more to see if I could find out how to use the luminosity masks which I'm afraid I personally have not worked out myself how to do it um, and I'm quite willing and be happy for someone to show me how they've done it but I did find a chap that has made some luminosity masks that you can download as macros um, I found this on the affinity forum um, if I just go to that page and it's done by a chap or, I should, or, or woman I should say whichever which is either S. Madel or Smadel and he's made or they have made some luminosity masks as uh, macros now I'm going to hopefully add a link to this page as a call out and it's the first time I've tried it um, and I've not fully tested it yet but when it comes up on the screen hopefully if you click on it it will open this page in a separate window if it doesn't work you will just have to either go to the affinity forum and look up Lumity mask for adjustments and filter layers or look up this address here which is quite long right now, if you scroll down, there is a point here where you can click and download the macros. Now, do not click on this one here, because as if you scroll down a bit further, you can see that people had a problem with it. And then he himself said that he had he tried it and had a problem with it, so he's re-uploaded it. And it's the second version of this that you want which is sli slightly less because this first one was 2.8 kilobytes and this new one is 2.7 kilobytes. So you just click on that and it will download as a zip file called Luminosity Blend Options for Adjustments. Now I'm using Windows 10 but it's pretty much the same in other versions but you can just like right, right click on that file and then extract all and then once it's extracted it will make 
an extracted folder like this which has the same name and inside that folder is the macro file so once you have it on your computer and you know where it is we can go back to affinity photo and we now need to load the macros now by default there is no macro tab in the studio files here but you can bring the macro tab tab up if you come to the view menu down to studio and then one of the options here is macro now but i've moved this macro file around quite a few times and i forgot which panel it actually comes in by default i've put it down here in the bottom um, but it might be in one of the other panels you just have to see where it opens up but we do also need the library panel so again come up to view studio and down to library right, so the library is opened up here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this out and dock it over here and I'm going to drag out the library and dock that over there as well so these two will work in conjunction and by default in the library there are, are some macros here that were supplied by serif and there's a couple here that I made myself for a previous video just to show you how macros worked and I, I did a very simple one where I did some high pass sharpening so on the library tab just over here there is a little icon a little downward arrow if you click on that you can import macros so click on import navigate to where the macro files that you have downloaded are based and it would have that name and finish with dot af macros just click on that to open and to highlight and then click open and then you will have a new subsection and then all the different luminosity macros are here starts off one the first one is resets and then there's four different macros that will affect the light areas differently and there's four different ones that affect the dark areas differently and then there's four that affect the midtones differently now i've been looking at a way to help demonstrate how this works best um, and the way i've come up with is something that you probably wouldn't never use it for but it does really show quite well i think how these macros will affect your image so what you need is an adjustment layer and that adjustment layer is what you use the macros on you don't use it on the actual image layer and the best adjustment I found to help show how this will work is invert because as you can see it does a really dramatic change of the image let me go back to the layers and as you can see here it is the invert adjustment layer that is highlighted so as I click on each one of these individually you can see what effect this different luminosity mask is having so we will start with the light areas um, if I just hide that a second as you can see the light areas is obviously the clouds and then the whites and yellows and parts of the sea um, so which in this case because it's inverted these are now technically the darker areas and the dark areas are now light but if I click on the first light adjustment filter as you can see it hasn't really affected what is technically the dark areas but the lighter areas have become a bit lighter if I go to the second one again this the sky is now altered from where it was in lights one and then lights three makes that lighter still and as you can see it's not really affecting what is technically the dark areas and then lights four so let's 
start affecting the dark areas. And you can see this is now affecting the dark areas and not having too much effect on what would be the lighter areas. And I'll just go through these separately. And then onto the midtones. So as you can see, these each of these different luminosity filters or masks affect the adjustment layer differently depending on which one you pick and whether you're going to try and affect the light areas of an image or the dark areas of an image. Let me put this back to normal which is how we started off with using this adjustment layer. And if I just delete that for a second and we will probably go for what would be more likely candidate for your use of an adjustment layer. So let's try this one and I'll I'll just bump up the saturation and the luminosity there. And it may not be as noticeable as it did with the invert one, but I will quickly just go through some of these luminosity mask adjustments. Let's try lights two, three, four, let's go on to darks two, and then midtones. So hopefully you can see there is some changes happening. It is, was not more noticeable on the invert adjustment, but you wouldn't really use that. But they are there now. They will, should be there per permanently, these macros. So you can use them at any point. And if you don't want them there permanently all the time, you can just go to View, Studio, and take the tick off of macro and then the tick off of library but the next time you you click on to macro or library if you've done what I've done and dragged it out and put it on the side here it will return back to the side here so hopefully that will help some people learn a bit more about macros and learn a bit more about the luminosity mask I am still going to investigate a bit further into trying to make the luminosity masks work for me, myself, better rather than using somebody else's macros. But this is as far as I've got so far and I hope it has been of some help. Thank you for watching and goodbye.